Bunch of questions, tell me where you at. Your motivation guy is back. I'm pumped up because I just believe that you can do anything you put your mind to. I just believe that you can just really accomplish your dreams and make a difference in this world. If you take it one day at a time to get better, to achieve your goals, you can do it. Do not listen to the negative thoughts. Listen to the positive voices, man, that you have in your life and just keep going forward. Today, I'm here to bring you guys the latest and greatest tips and tricks to make you guys the best Fortnite player you can be. And, uh, you know, we got some good news and stories to really help you keep up with all the competitive stuff out there, right? So what do you guys think of when a new season rolls around? Like, do you think about the new battle pass, leveling up? How about exploring the new weapons and additions to the map? You know, for everyone serious about competition, the first thing on your mind is the FNCS and the road towards getting there. But you can never start too soon, man. So what is the FNCS? You know, why is it so important? And how did it become the biggest competition to look forward to each season? We got to take a dive, man, and just find out exactly how the FNCS helped Fortnite competitive rise in popularity. But before we do, it's time for our tradition. It's time to sit back, relax, and get some of my favorite candy. What is it, y'all? It's that bunch of crunch. Oh, and let's get this going. All right, so to know about the FNCS, you should get a quick brush up on what came before. You know, in 2019, we got the greatest Fortnite tournament the community had ever seen, like the World Cup, okay? And with it came the chance to become the world champion. And after many weeks of trying for qualifiers, 100 players went up against each other to find out who would become the world champion. This was a peak moment in Fortnite history. And while there would be two other, you know, major LAN tournaments afterwards, neither of them could really hold a candle to the level of hype at this one event. So with the World Cup being such a success, was this destined to become a yearly event? You know, perhaps in another timeline, it did become yearly. Perhaps we would have multiple champions by now and the event would grow even larger than the 2019 version as land tournaments expanded but instead the fncs would fill that void left behind as one of the bigger tournaments held multiple times each year let me ask you this man you guys want to try to get good for the next comp season click in the link below and visit proguides.com for some pro level coaching that can help you get ready for the next tournament learn new strategies master the meta improve your fighting skills come in with any skill level that you're on and we're going to make sure to beef you up so you can start seeing your improvements asap Fortnite Season X was the final season in Chapters 1's lineup, and you know, it was just one of the more exciting yet controversial seasons in Fortnite. Competitive was going full swing and the constant debate over you know, whether the mechs were overpowered were a common topic. But Season X also brought something new to the table, and that was the FNCS. The FNCS was introduced as an end of season tournament. You know, Players would need to grind arena points in order to meet the qualifications needed to participate in the event. From there, players would need to qualify through a series of matches in order to keep moving up the ladder and reach the finals. Because of how the FNCS works, players have the opportunity to qualify for the finals right away if their score is high enough. Otherwise, they're going to need to just keep competing and just rely on placements and eliminations to fall within the top players. Regardless, with so many players in each region just trying to qualify for the respective FNCS event, I mean, it was just loaded with the top players. Notable players who managed to reach top ranks during the FNCS included players such as Aqua and Epic Well and Scented. I mean, they either managed to place first or scored high enough to get themselves and their teammates a top 10 placement. Okay, so if there was one thing that really solidified the FNCS into the hopes and dreams of every player, it was COVID. <laughs> All right, so in early months of 2020, COVID spread across the globe, forcing many businesses to shut down to prevent the spread. This also obviously had an effect on competitive gaming since many in-person events were canceled to prevent large gatherings. So one of these events, which was canceled or at least taken out of consideration, was a potential 2020 World Cup. You know, while this should sting within the community, it was a necessary course of action, right? But this didn't stop Fortnite competitive. I mean, instead, it would become part of the reason the FNCS became so popular. You know, with many operations going remote, the competitive community follows suit. In fact, this shutdown actually gave plenty of players more time to focus on practicing their Fortnite skills. Fun little bit of trivia, you know, Fortnite actually saw a surge of activity during the lockdown with many players either having more time to play or exploring the game for the first time to keep busy. With online tournaments becoming the only way to compete, many players would start to prioritize arena in order to reach diamond rank and disqualify for the bigger events of the season, especially the FNCS, which became the crowning jewel of competitions. You know, winning also meant a chance to hold the acts of champions, right? You know, despite the reason for its rise in popularity and necessity, the FNCS had some positive effects on the competitive community. I mean, for starters, the FNCS became a very consistent tournament to look forward to each season. Not only that, but because of the prize pool, it attracted many players, you know, that wanted a taste of the big money. The current FNCS for season two has a prize pool of three million which is divided across each region and distributed among the winners. I mean, that's not a bad incentive at all. The FNCS also had an impact on player popularity. Before the FNCS, I mean, you might be thinking about watching someone
someone as they practice for a cup, but you didn't always just watch their actual tournament bout. But the FNCS wasn't just any other cash cup or event. I mean, it was the event of the season and therefore had way more hype behind it. And so this attracted the attention of not just players, but spectators as well. It became just so much more common to watch the FNCS through the streams and, and was also a great way of networking and just making yourself stand out as a pro. Even if you didn't win the FNCS, man, you could just show off and just appear on the leaderboards and just get a boost in viewership, subscribers, and even followers. You know, it's also provided a good place to really make yourself visible to organizations that might be on the hunt for new talent. I mean, all you gotta do was just qualify and you be in a good place. All right, so let's just talk about formatting. You know, the formatting for the FNCS also played a major role in how competitive players tackle Fortnite. You know, during earlier FNCS, we got formats such as solos and duos, but a few seasons into Chapter 2, Epic seemed to have settled down with the idea of using a trios format. After all, I mean, it just seemed like a good competitive format and it gave players something a little bit more stable and less likely to change. With that, trios became the standard format for a while. You know, playing as trios would affect how players behave, they networked, and organized their party. You know, because of this, many pros tend to gravitate towards creating trios during the competitive season. And so this allows them to train together at the start of the season and just work their way up towards the qualifiers. With trios as a major format, it also means many players need to learn more about assigning roles within the team, right? Like this meant having your IGL and Fragger and support all working together was important if you guys wanted to succeed during the FNCS. This is where it got really tricky for some players though. Like you really needed the right combination of players to make a team work. So if you just saw a player get switched out or a team, you know, disbanding and finding new players, this is usually done in the hopes of finding other like-minded people with better synergy. So working as a team for a big event such as an FNCS, I mean, it just helps bring in more viewers. You know, nothing is more exciting when players announce they're going to be teaming up with other popular players to take on the challenge. As the viewer, I mean, we get a chance to really see these different personalities work off each other, and in some cases, we even see dream teams being made. You know, it's even more exciting when a team manages to win multiple FNCS in a row. All right, so thanks to the FNCS, there have now been a whole slew of players getting more recognition than ever before. In fact, these players are known as the FNCS champions and wielders of the Axe of Champions. You know, Arkham, Rex, and Epic Well are just some of the names that have grown in popularity thanks to their achievements during the FNCS. You know, during Chapter 2, they managed to take on first place together during Season 4, 5, 6, and 7. And if there's one thing players love, is a winning streak. I mean, who, if anyone, will get a winning streak for Chapter 3 is still up for speculation. You and we're just gonna have to see how the season plays out. Okay, for now, guys, here is the question of the day. Bunch Course Army, you guys ready for this? What's your favorite moment during the FNCS? Like, what teams have gotten you the most hype up in the season's past? Answer in the comments section below. All right, so during Chapter 3 Season 1, the FNCS made a surprising change. Moving away from the standard trios format we had grown accustomed to and instead returning to duels format. During the current Season 2 FNCS, the duels format has remained. While this change would shake things up, you know, it would ultimately become just another challenge for players and an opportunity to rethink the strategy. You know, with smaller teams, it just meant that players would have to split roles even further between themselves. But this also presents an opportunity for more eliminations. You know, while land tournaments have still not made a full come back, the FNCS remains as one of the most anticipated events for any player who wants a real chance to show what they're capable of. If not, I mean, it's still a very exciting match to watch on Twitch or through the Fortnite streams, you know, in games, and just it's going to continue to do so even if the Fortnite World Cup makes a comeback. All right, so before we start wrapping things up for today, don't forget to check out ProGuys.com for some pro-level coaching. Get yourself ready to take on any challenge. Bunch Girls Army, where you at? Your motivation guy is back. Listen, you can do it. You can make it to the big stage, but you got to apply yourself. You got to think positive. And, you know, you just got to use the strategies that we're giving. You know, the sky is not the limit. You can do it. Hey, uh, listen, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and connect with my Instagram at Your Motivation Guy. Remember, man, the FNCS has opened many doors for competitors to make themselves known to the world. And so, you know, if you keep practicing, like I said, and just tackling as many cups as events as possible, I mean, you too eventually could maybe qualify. You could do it. So dream big and play hard. Hey, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.